My name is Natsuki Nakamura. I've only been married to my husband for half a year. Cooking is one of my hobbies. I even went to culinary school and studied, so I'm pretty confident in my cooking. Tetsuya always ate my cooking like he really enjoyed it, so I was really happy. Your cooking is seriously so delicious! It's fancy, and everyone's always so jealous! <laughs> really? You realize you're gonna make me work harder? We had a great life together until that day. <sighs> what do I make tonight? I work at home, so besides meetings with clients, I pretty much stay at home. It's work that I can do from home, so I often use my time wisely to cook. In the morning, I send Tsukiya off and then do the laundry and prep dinner. Before I know it, it's lunchtime. I guess I can have leftovers with some eggs and rice. That's what I normally eat alone. I don't want to waste leftovers. It was right as I had everything ready and set on the table. I'm home! I just came around the house from making rounds with the clients. Can I have lunch? Oh, hi, Tetsuya. Welcome home. Tetsuya had come home out of the blue. He was apparently around the area while making rounds with clients. When we made it back to the living room, he looked at the food that I was about to eat and freaked out. What? What is that? Uh, it's my lunch? Why are you eating that? What do you mean? It's just leftovers. This is what I normally eat when I'm alone. He fell silent. I didn't understand, but he seemed to be shocked. I'm so disappointed. You're always making delicious and fancy food. You don't do that when you're alone? That's so... That's so... Ew. I'm the only one that's going to be eating it. I'm not wasting things, so what's the problem? Why do I have to make fancy food when no one is even looking? I mean, I'm sure there are some people who do that, but... I always make good food because I want Tsuya to eat good food. But it's not like I just want to be fancy to be fancy. I cannot believe that you're that kind of person! Seriously! Unacceptable! What the hell is that attitude? <sighs> I thought you were a fancy woman and here I end up with a basic bitch. I was tricked. Just because I'm eating leftovers? It didn't matter what I said after that, he just kept telling me the same thing. Apparently, he was more concerned with the fact that I make fancy food rather than not wasting food. He kept escalating his insults and I could feel myself quickly getting tired of him. A few days later, while he was in the shower, his phone rang. Hmm. It was on the sofa, so I took a look out of curiosity when... Minami? I saw a name that I hadn't heard before on the text. It was just a notification on the screen. No way. I opened his messages. I was surprised at the conversation that was on there. Thank you about before. That store was amazing. My wife is seriously such a basic bitch. She doesn't make me any good food. <laughs> oh, what? That's the worst. I'd make you great, delicious food. Okay. Can you make some for me when I go over to your house? We can do a hotel, too. Okay. Going back further, I found some conversations that aren't appropriate here. It was an affair. I was frozen. I can't believe that he would cheat on me just because of the food he saw. I wasn't processing everything fast enough. I heard Tatsuya coming out of the bath and I snapped out of it. I took photos of the text messages quickly. I still couldn't calm down. It hasn't even been half a year since we've been married. Huh? Is something wrong? N no I'm fine. Oh yeah, I have an Instagrammer I want you to see. This account. Tetsuya showed me an account by the name of Minami. It was clearly his mistress. It's super fancy, isn't it? You should use this as an example. That night, I was looking at her Instagram. All of the food was actually really good looking. I eat stuff like this when I'm on my own, she said. The photos were indeed fancy. She had a photo that was close to our station. She must live nearby. Tetsuya followed her and DM'd her, which led her to, Hey, you live near me, let's meet up. I'm assuming that's how it went. I could imagine it happening. The other photos had photos that kind of seemed like she was with a man, or photos near a hotel. There were even photos of Tetsuya with his hand in it. 
He had his wedding ring on, too. I wouldn't mistake it. Ugh, whatever. I don't care anymore. Tetsuya sleeping soundly next to me. I knew exactly what I had to do. First, I had to gather evidence. That wasn't going to be enough. I can't just look at his phone. I had to call his office. Check on when he'd taken leave, of course. Oh, he's been off a few times this month. I think at least three times this month. Three times. Thank you. I didn't hear about him taking off at all this month. I cross-checked the days he took off to the days she uploaded photos with the two of them. It was spot on. I brought this evidence to a lawyer and finally gave him divorce papers. It was about a month after he had seen my lunch. Divorce? Yeah, sure. I don't want to be with a basic bitch anyway. I guess we'll divorce before my meal becomes basic too. Yeah, let's do that. I don't think I'd ever served him anything less than my 100%. I always did my best to make it fancy. But he was only thinking about Minami. See you later, basic bitch. He left the house. I was borrowing the house anyways as a place for my work. We had only been married for half a year, so it wasn't like we had any shared wealth. We just divorced. He immediately started calling me. Minami spends too much money. I thought she handmade all her food, but she literally buys everything. She keeps talking about how she needs to upload the next IG photo, and she goes to hotel luncheons all the time. Okay, and? So, like, let's start over. I think you're the better one. I'll deal with the basic meals. You don't have anything you want to tell me before that? I was pissed off at how selfish he was being. He could have just disappeared, but I had no sympathy left for this idiot who always blamed it on his partner. You've been cheating on me with Minami-san before we were divorced, right? No, that's not true. I have proof. If you keep bothering me, I'm going to sue you for damages. What? The divorce papers hadn't been signed yet. I figured this would happen, so I kept it hidden this whole time. I can't believe he would come out and yell at me. I'm sorry. I really regret what I did. Please forgive me and retry with me. The reason I had simple meals. Huh? I didn't want to waste food. I want to finish all the leftovers. When you weren't looking, I knew that you cared about looks all the time, so you may not understand. As someone who loves cooking, it was something that we should all understand. Tsuya and Minami. They probably never would understand. I sued both of them for damages and divorced him. Minami was crying and apologizing, but the lawyer said it was his job and made sure that she signed all of the paperwork. Minami also just pretended to be some fancy Instagrammer. She's just a regular part-time worker. She took out loans just to go to hotels and cafes. It was kind of a pity, really. I can't pay for this, then I can't live a fancy life. She deleted the account, probably because she didn't have to be all fancy anymore. I pity the fool that fell for her too. He messaged me a few times that he wanted to do things over and that he wanted to eat my food again, but I just gave it all to my lawyer. I started my own cooking class after that. I mean, it's just homemade food, so it's not super fancy. But people are interested, and there are quite a few men who come. There's one that seems pretty cute, but, well, we'll leave that for another day. People think it's just food, but you can't just pretend it's not important or a limited resource. I'm only going to keep the people who value my cooking, no matter how it looks, close to me. My name is Kana Omura. I'm going to be turning 26 this year. Both my husband and I work, and I work a regular desk job at a company. I almost never have to work late. That's why I get to spend more time on cooking. I often go home thinking about what I should cook for dinner. What do I cook? My husband, Dakai, is the opposite. He often works late and barely makes it home for dinner. Some nights, he even comes home right before I go to bed. It must be so nice having an easy job. He often says this about regular office jobs. I don't know what to say. It's tough sometimes, too. Yes, our company may not be working late often, but while we are working, we're quite busy. The only reason we don't work late is because we work efficiently during work hours. If you don't do that, you have to work late. There are no jobs that require no effort. But telling him that... You don't understand the difficulty of being a man. 
doesn't make him listen at all. His work must really be tough. That's probably why he acts this way. One day, I was heading home, thinking about what to eat as usual. I thought that curry would be an easy dish to cook up. We haven't eaten curry in a while. I headed to the store to pick up some ingredients and started making it as soon as I got home. I cut everything up within an hour and tossed in the curry blocks. I got a message from Takai. I figured it would be that he would be home by 7 p.m., but... Hey, I want to eat fried oyster, so I'm going to buy oyster on the way home. I'll be home around 8 p.m. What? I couldn't help but vocalize my surprise. The curry is done and the rice is cooked. Maybe I can tell him not to buy any oysters? I messaged him in a hurry. Wait, hang on, I've already made dinner. Can we do that another day? Fried foods this late is too much of a hassle, and I can't make it past eight, it's too much work. Dakai wasn't satisfied with this answer though. What? Your husband is saying he wants fried oyster. No, no, I can't fry anything from 8 p.m. I gotta get ready for tomorrow too. If a husband asks for something, a wife should make it. You're failing as a wife. I was aghast at what he had to say. He came back around 8 p.m. as he announced and ignored my greeting. He walked past me to the kitchen where he placed a bag containing oysters. Wait, hang on, I said I couldn't do it. I even made curry. Why can't you cook me what I want to eat? You're so mean. If you had told me the night before or even this morning, I could have made it, but I can't just cook it immediately. Frying is easy. You just put some powder on it and panko and fry it. You're such a sloth. This person does not know how difficult frying things can be. You have to prepare the oysters, dry it out, flavor it with salt and pepper. Then you have to dip it in flour, eggs, and panko before frying it in oil. Once it's done, you have to get rid of the used oil and clean up the splashed oil. That's start to finish of frying oysters. It's not that difficult if you decide you want to make oysters that day, but we have curry, it's 8 p.m., and suddenly I have oysters to cook? There is not a housewife in the world that wouldn't get mad. It's not easy. If you think it's so easy, do it yourself. You're gonna make a man cook? You're scum! He ran to his room after that. We just haven't talked since. The next day, he didn't say a word to me. I made him breakfast, but not a single thanks. I was at the end of my patience. That night, I called his mother without telling him. Dakai came home without working late, which was lucky. He seemed happy to see his mom. What's up, mom? I didn't know you were coming. You should have told me. But seriously, hear me out. This woman won't cook me what I want. Tell her. The guy probably thought that his mom would take his side, but... What are you talking about? Huh? Well, last night I bought some oysters, so I said, make some fried oysters for me. It should be easy, right? Okay, then fry something for me. I'll watch. What are you talking about? I'm a man. Do it! He was surprised at the deep voice that just came out of his mother. He was bitching the whole way to the kitchen. He took out the oysters he bought yesterday and started prepping them. We were just watching. This is so easy. Why won't you do this? Mom is going to be so disappointed in you. Dakai didn't dry the oysters. He didn't put any flour on. He just tossed it into the egg. Then he just kind of tossed some panko on it and put it in oil that isn't even heated. Of course, it was just turning into a liquid and it looked all messed up. Huh? Wait, do I not have enough flame? He was obviously starting to struggle before turning up the fire. Then he tossed more oysters into the fire. <laughs> the oil was all over the place. It was even on the roof. The oysters were burnt to a crisp. He fried them all, but none seemed edible. What about cleanup? Huh? You're gonna wipe it all up and take care of the used oil. He had cooled it off and thought about where to throw the oil away. He tried to let it run in the drain, but his mom yelled at him for that. You had to use paper towels to suck up the oil and throw it away. This time I gave him rags to wipe everything down. Why do I have to do this? I do this every time I fry things. You have to take off all the oil ASAP. Once he completely finished, about two hours had passed. It took you two hours. You came home at a little past eight. I would be done around 10 p.m. if I had cooked last night. 
You'd be quicker since you're used to things. This was my first time. Yeah, that's true. But do you understand how difficult it is to fry things? But if your husband wants to eat something, then you should cook it. He is not giving up. I was sighing because I just couldn't believe it. His mom, who was silently watching, exploded. Enough! You don't even make enough to be having an attitude like that! Stop complaining! But... Yeah, unfortunately he makes less than me, but I still do most of the chores. When we got married, he said he would do some of the chores, but... It was really only the beginning. Your father and I both worked, but we helped each other out. There were times where one of us just absolutely couldn't, but we always said thank you and I'm sorry. You have no sense of compassion. He saw his father doing things around the house. How did he turn out like this? I'm gonna let you stay with your mom for a little. Huh? Are you saying... I understand. You realize that she totally has a right to consider that, right? Cooking is one thing. He often makes fun of me or mocks me, and I just couldn't look past it. I don't care if we're husband and wife. He was so concerned with that relationship that it was honestly just getting in my way. I just wanted to live fairly. He went home with her, basically being dragged out. His father apparently talked to him too, but he hasn't changed much. The only thing he's got going for him is that he's a man. He couldn't let that go. He wants to be a proud and great husband. Yeah, that comes after the respect. You're not proud because you do nothing or great because you order someone around. Someone who does the chores is much more respectable than someone who just orders people around. A little while after, Dakai reached out to me. I want to go home soon. I see. Did your mom and dad say it's okay? I don't care. I'm the man of the house. I need to go home. This man hadn't changed at all. I was disappointed that nothing has gotten through his thick skull. Look, I don't care about your stupid status and being the man of the house. I don't care about how much you make. I'd rather you worry about me and care for me, do you understand? But I'm a man! Yes, you're a man, but your father and mother work together too. He shut up. This person was just looking for reasons to push and order me around. He's not interested in cooperating. Okay, fine. I wanted to help you, but I guess you don't want to help me. I can't continue this with a man like you. Wait, huh? hang on! I went immediately to get divorce papers. I wrote my name and sent it to his parents' house. He was whining while his father forced him to push the stamp. He started screaming and pouting about shared wealth, and it was funny to know that he was scolded about that too. Dakai apparently told his co-workers about the reason behind his divorce, and they all helped to let him know about how wrong he was. Some of our mutual friends said, He seemed so proud to have divorced you because you wouldn't fry him oysters. I've been freed and have been enjoying single life in my own little room. I go home to cook my own meal after work and invite friends over from time to time. Of course, a lot of people have sympathized with me over the cooking thing, but I don't care anymore. I'm just gonna waste my energy. I'm sure something fun will happen soon. My name is Akami Kinoshita. My husband Masaru and I have been married for six years now. We have two kids aged three and two. Both are boys. I'm a housewife, but I'm exhausted from dealing with them every day. I'm thinking of putting them in daycare to start working, but where I live, daycare is hard to come by. But my parents' house is just one or two stops on the train, so I'm thinking of leaving them to my parents who love their grandchildren so I can start working. In the midst of all this, there is a problem that's currently plaguing me. How nice it is to be a full-time housewife. You sleep with the kids during the day anyway, right? Of course not. It's a very difficult time for me right now. They're always saying no, they're full of energy, they fight, and you can't take your eyes off of them because they might do something dangerous. Yeah, yeah, hurry up and start working. Our finances are tight. How can you talk like that? I haven't been able to get much done at home ever since the kids have been able to move around more freely. 
My kids are not good sleepers, and I have to get them ready in the morning and feed them despite my grogginess. The younger one also wants to be left alone and cries a lot. Then we go to the park or support center to exercise. Then lunch, if I'm lucky, they'll take a nap. Evenings are the worst. They start to get in a bad mood, but I still have to feed them, bathe them, and put them to bed. There are so many dangers for children, both at home and outside. If you take your eyes off of them, they'll suddenly start running, falling, climbing. There's no time to rest. With all that going on every day, there's no time to worry about the husband. Compared to that, my sister who works as well is amazing. She even does the housework. The other day when we got together at my in-law's house, I met my sister-in-law Haru and her husband Sutamu for the first time in a while. They're both good-natured people, and I often contact them for advice. At that time, Sutamu showed me a picture. We made this at our house, Paella. It turned out good, and I wanted to show it off. Wow, amazing! Sutamu is a good cook and he's been posting his cooking on Instagram and other sites. It sure looked like it was made by a pro. Even though they have two children as well, I certainly think it's impressive. Are you two both working? I'm jealous. Oh no, no, we share the workload. My wife is a housewife and is no good at all. I laughed it off and got over it. After that, he kept making fun of me, so I finally snapped. Why don't you go visit my sister-in-law then? Huh? Why don't you try being Sutamu? I suggested that we exchange Masaru with Sutamu for two weeks to get to know each other's families. My husband was overjoyed. When I told my sister-in-law about the situation, she readily agreed. Good idea! When we got together, I thought it was a crazy idea. I'll tell Sutamu. Of course, Sutamu immediately agreed too. I can play with my child! He was happy to hear. We decided to exchange from that weekend, and my husband went to my sister-in-law's house with great enthusiasm. On the other hand, Sutamu brought a lot of things to our house. I brought a lot of things so I could play with my nephews. Please, take your time and rest, Akami. As he said, Sutamu did everything from meals to housework and even played with the children. On weekdays, he wakes up early in the morning, prepares breakfast, and helps the children get ready in the morning, and then goes to work. On weekends, he would take care of the children and it had been a long time since I was able to go to the hair salon. Well, I think Sutamu is a rare person who can do everything, but I still compare him to my husband. My husband doesn't even bathe our kids. What will happen if I start working? My anxiety never lifted. Well, I said two weeks, but to my surprise, my husband came back after one week. I can't anymore! Come on. I heard the story from my sister-in-law, who was also quite angry. My husband thought that my sister-in-law would do most of the housework. He knew that Sutumi could cook, but he didn't think he was doing the other household chores and my sister-in-law was doing everything. Because she's a woman. He thought there was no such thing as a woman who didn't do housework. He thought that my sister-in-law was a woman who was quick and efficient and could do more than me. That can't be true, though. My sister-in-law made my husband work, just like when she was with Sutumu. First, she would wake my husband up at 6 a.m. and have him prepare breakfast and do some light cleaning. While my husband was preparing breakfast, my sister-in-law would get ready to go to work. What are you doing putting on makeup so carefree? This is the minimum etiquette for those who are going face-to-face -face with clients. If you're a working adult, you should know what I'm talking about. But a man cooking while a woman is putting on makeup? All you have to do is cook some sausages and toast up the bread. Then they do the laundry together. 
and when the kids wake up, he helps get them dressed and eat. And goes to work at the last minute. My sister-in-law works for a company that requires her to work on weekends. So he had to do all the housework for the kids by himself during the weekends, which left him in shambles. Why can't you even bathe the kids? Because I usually work. I do it even when I'm working, and so does Sutamu. After many such conversations, the sister-in-law seemed to have lost her patience. How can you live with someone like this? When my sister-in-law said this, I began to agree. When he came back, my husband became more gentle and... Can you stay at home for a while instead of working? I'll do my best at work! Uh... He doesn't want to do it by himself after all. I understand clearly now. If he said, let's cooperate on the housework and childcare from now on, maybe it would have been different. Look, all I'm asking for is understanding and cooperation. I'm going to be working sooner or later. You're going to have to learn how to do the housework and take care of the kids. Okay. Although he worked reasonably well for a month after returning from my sister-in-law's place, he must have started to think he couldn't do it or that he didn't want to do it and gradually went back to the way he was. Hey, I thought you were going to learn housework and childcare. I can only work, you know. You stay as a full-time housewife. Do your job how you've always done it. You're the mother. No, no, no. I'm going to work when daycare becomes available. I can't take care of you and the two kids. Tuition fees and other expenses are going to come up. I don't mean to be rude, but there's no way we can make it on Masaru's salary alone. I wanted to shout that. And so the next day, what a coincidence, I received a phone call from the city office. The daycare center is now open. We can start accepting children next month. What would you like to do? It seemed like a voice of salvation for me. I lied and told him my parents wanted to see the kids and went back home with them. Of course, I told my parents what had been happening. I decided to reconsider once and for all. First, I needed to find a job. I have to find one before I put them in daycare. I'm qualified, so it wouldn't be difficult there. Although I stayed at my parents' house, I tried to do as much of the housework as possible, including meals, by myself, as if I were to live as a single. I tried to spend my time thinking that way, but it was easier to think of myself as someone who no longer had a husband from the beginning. I won't be swayed by frustration. I can do it at my own pace. I was reassured that everything would be fine, and to my surprise, I found a job. Next, I decided on a house. I was already prepared. When I got back from my parents' house, I talked to my husband again. Hey, I'm thinking of working. What? I told you to stay as a full-time housewife. But we're going to have a lot of expenses from now on, right? Well, we'll be fine if we save money and not be extravagant, right? But that won't cut it for school tuition. I have to work for that. And I want you to take on the housework as well. What? No way! Then you do it! I'm tired from work. Ugh, seriously. It was stupid of me to get my hopes up. Then, here. What?! I handed him the divorce papers. My husband froze. Did he really think he wouldn't be divorced? I've already found a job and a house. All you have to do is put your stamp on it and it's over. I'll take care of the kids. No, 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 wait! Just because I don't take care of the house or kids? I'll take care of it then, okay? You didn't. I, I will, from now on. That's why we talked about the future, right? But you said you can't. You won't. Living at home, I understood. I can do just fine without you. No! After that, my husband was reluctant to divorce me, and it took quite a while to file the papers. My kids and I moved into our new home and, as expected, are living happily and without incident. It's really much easier now that I don't have to take care of my husband. That's the only regret that I have, that I should have done this from the beginning. 
My work is going well, and I only ask my parents to stay with me when I have to. They had heard about my husband, so they were willing to watch the kids, which I was grateful for. My husband finally seems to understand that I'm not coming back, and he seems to be complaining and whining to my sister-in-law and her husband. Every time that happens... It's because you didn't cooperate properly, and you're not even paid well enough to save money. Are you stupid? They scold and laugh at him. Tsutomu was also appalled. I'm relieved that the kids are not under much stress because my husband didn't really take care of them from the beginning. From now on, I'm going to live my life taking care of these two. My name is Kumi Shirakawa. I work at a restaurant. I make mostly Western dishes, and as busy as it is, I've never thought that I didn't enjoy what I do. I'd always love to cook, and I've been really peculiar about what pots and pans I used. Wow, it looks so good! Eat up! Seeing dishes on TV or magazines that look good makes me want to cook it myself. Really thick pancakes or fish bowls with lots of sushi. Of course, I buy all the stuff I need within my own allotted amount of money. Wow, you really don't see pork belly cuts with skin on it. Maybe I'll use this today. Cooking is only part of the fun. Looking for the ingredients is great too. Buying things that I found at work or new tools that seem to be useful to try it out. Sometimes I even go by the store on dates just to check things out. My husband Yuki is the complete opposite of me and had zero interest in cooking. He ate things like... I didn't want to have a bunch of pots and pans either. I basically only had long chopsticks for cooking. Even my knife was from the dollar store. It doesn't matter as long as you can cook using it. I'm just picky because it's my hobby. I'm sure that's how most men are. That's why I love seeing him eat my food like it's the best thing to ever grace his little taste buds. But my mother-in-law really didn't like that. We lived near her, so she would sometimes come over and nag about my cooking. You waste so much money buying this crap. You always say it's your hobby or whatever, but it's not going to be good just because you use rare things. She would always look at my new utensils and cooking wear before commenting on my food. Don't be like that, Mom. It's not a waste. It's actually pretty interesting when you use it, and convenient too. Hmm, <laughs> whatever. Whipped much. My husband would often cover for me, but that would just make her even angrier than before. You only need the bare minimum for good cooking. You think you're some kind of chef or something? You want to brag? I can make delicious things with just a pressure cooker. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to do stuff. <laughs> it's not like we live together, so I just left it alone. Then something happened. My mother-in-law shoved up. My mother-in-law showed up for no apparent reason. It was around lunch, so Yuki said he would make fried rice. Wow, Yuki is going to cook? How exciting! Thank you, hun. My husband stood in the kitchen in confidence. He seemed to have started to have an interest in cooking. It started with a cast iron frying pan. He wasn't too sure about the different types of frying pan. That's why, that's why he recently learned about my six-year-old tried and tested cast iron frying pan. Wow. It's different from the regular ones, right? It's definitely not just a regular Teflon pan. You can't use soap when you wash it either. He was so excited to be able to use it after he learned that I had been using it over six years ago. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just slightly larger than most of the common frying pans. It's extra annoying to have to deal with cast iron because you can't wash it with soap. There was a time I couldn't get a burned on piece of food and ended up washing it with some baking soda. It actually returned to its original state. I had to reuse it to bring it back again. It's pretty tough using a cast iron pan. It's just day-to-day -day use, so once you get used to it, it's no big deal. Hey, can I cook with this? Sure, but it's difficult. I'll use it very carefully, since I know it's important to you. I taught him how to use it, and he followed my directions down to a T. He realized that the flavor was completely different when he made it with a cast iron pan. I wanted to cook using a cast iron pan after seeing some videos on YouTube use one. He didn't care at all about food or cooking, but now... I was so happy to see him changing. Almost every weekend, he would cook fried rice. He would change the flavor just a little bit to keep things fresh. No matter the reason why he started getting interested, I was glad that he was interested at all. Things returned to normal and we were waiting for Yuki to finish cooking. About half an hour later, we could start smelling the incredible scent of fried rice. The, fri the fried rice was done perfectly and full of flavors. Here you are!
Wow, you finished that quickly. Thanks. Thank you. It's so good. My mother-in-law was overjoyed. I was hoping she'd just go home after this. Right around the time we finished eating. Oh, the phone is ringing. The phone rang, so I stepped away to answer it. What are you doing, Mom? My husband was boiling water for the tea, and it was already too late. Uh, what's going on? Yuki yelled. I finished my call-up and ran back to the kitchen when I heard his yelling. I wondered if someone was injured, but... The frying pan! You washed it? There she was, washing my cast iron pan with dish soap. Six years of my cooking, down the drain in an instant. B but it was dirty. I figured I'd clean for you since you cooked for me. It was so dirty. Dirty? The dish soap was put away too. We almost never wash using our hands. We normally just put the dishes in the dishwasher and let it go that way. We had never put the dish soap in the sink for that very reason. I'm sure she went through my stuff and washed it because she went digging through my stuff when we moved here to look for the soap. It's a cast iron pan, so when you wash it with soap, it kind of ruins the pan. So I put the soap away to make sure my husband doesn't wash it on accident. I see. We even talked about this very topic. She saw me using the soap right next to her. What is that? It's gross. It's a cast iron pan. Using it makes the oil seep in and brings out the flavor. Gross, you don't wash it. Washing it makes all the oil fall off, but I make sure to clean it without washing off the oils. I explained to her a long time ago. She knows what would happen if you wash the pan with soap. She didn't anyway. She must have been surprised that my husband was mad at her. It's just a pan. You can't use that anymore. She was taking such great care of it. I even made that fried rice using this. Just a pan? Get out of the house! I worked hard to become the stir-fry master! Stir-fry master? I didn't realize that he wanted to do that. Yuki, I'm sorry. Hang on. Hey! Let's go to my dad's house. She was chased out of the house, but my husband wasn't done. Neither was I. Yeah. Before his mom made it back, we got in our car and headed to his parents' house. We went straight to the kitchen. What are you guys doing? Sorry, Dad. <laughs> we made her clean for us, so we're here to return the favor. My husband started cleaning the Teflon tree to pots and pans using a hard bristle sponge. I'm home! What are you doing? My mother-in-law, who was walking home, was surprised we were here. She figured out what my husband was doing before panicking. Wait, stop, please! We're done with all of it. Yeah. No, what is this? The kitchen was full of pots and pans with scratches all over them. I also took the handle off the pressure cooker that she loved to brag about all the time. Without this, it's just a regular pot. I'm going to take this home as a little gift. You always come over and take her toilet paper, you know? It should be fine, right? Wait, hang on. If I don't have that, I can't use a pressure cooker. You, you know it was difficult for me to use a toilet after you stole my toilet paper. Now we're even. Yeah, I know it's not the same thing, but I couldn't let it go anymore. We ignored her begging and pleas and headed to the exit. I felt pretty good about everything, but my husband was still not done. Hey, Yuki, wait! Don't be so mad! I'll buy you another pad, okay? Please don't be mad at Mom! <sighs> he was honestly over it all. We were about to leave, but he glared back at her. You know, I just want to tell you to stop mocking my wife. Huh? You realize that I was able to find something that I like because she introduced me to a hobby of hers, right? She must have thought that her son would forgive her. She was just frozen in place. I thank Kumi from the bottom of my heart. That's why I can't forgive you for what you've done to her important piece of equipment. Don't ever come over to our house again! What? He completely shot her down. You know, I don't think we're going to see each other, so I'll leave this here for you. I felt a little bad, so I left the handle to the pressure cooker. It was something she really treasured, so I knew what it felt like to lose that. She stopped coming over after that. Yuki told his dad about what happened, and he apparently also chewed her out, telling her to mind her own business. Yuki had finally calmed down and was excited to rebuild our pan. So I decided to let him take care of it from now on. I'm so glad that both of us are in the kitchen now. I wanted to make something good for him to eat. My name is Mina Tomizawa. I married my...
I married my husband, Yuya, three years ago. We don't have kids right now, but I'm juggling being a housewife while working some part-time jobs. It's pretty busy, but things were great between us. What? Again? Come on! Rie needs help! No, you need to tell her no. That was until Yuya's sister, Rie, moved nearby. If you said yes, then you need to do it. I'm not going to look after Yuka, period. But I already said yes! I'm sorry that I didn't ask you before, but I felt so bad for Yuka. Like I said, if you want to say you feel so bad, then she should be given over to your parents' house. Why are you moving things along under the assumption that I'm going to just say yes and take care of her? That's not how it is. Come on, Mina. Please. My sister-in-law's married, but she lived far away until recently. This year, my niece, Yuka-chan, has started kindergarten and my sister-in-law moved close to her house. She must be thinking that our household is just a free Uber or babysitting service because she just kept asking us for help. Maybe my husband wanted to act like the big tough brother, but he always looked after her and never turned her down. The problem started when he started pushing it onto me. We've been arguing over this ever since. He just pushes it onto me because he's got work. First, he needs to talk to me about it, and if he doesn't, then I'm going to turn it down with no exceptions. How many times do I have to tell him? You're so mean! You realize that Rie is also your sister, and Yuka's your niece, right? I heard from your mom that she was wandering around, asking people to look, asking people to look after her child, and people hated that. I'm no different. In conclusion, I'm not going to do it. I heard what she had done at her old house from my mother-in-law, so I took a strict no-touch policy. My husband was saying how he felt so bad, but apparently he was going to turn it down because I wouldn't accept. The next night... Yeah, sorry. My wife is so useless. She's just kind of cold, and I honestly might consider divorcing her. He was talking out loud to make sure I heard. He wanted me to hear the words divorce. What the hell is that shit-eating smirk? I'm gonna throw this soapy water on your face, you little- Honestly, if this was going to keep up, I honestly had to consider divorce. He kept looking over at me, smirking, and I was just getting angrier and angrier. One day, I'm sorry I didn't hear you, so can you tell me again? I said, can you make bento for my niece every morning and deliver it by 7.30 a.m. to her? He started spewing nonsense again. Rie said she can't wake up every morning, you know? But she has to make bento for Yuka. You can just make another bento with mine. It's small. No big deal, right? Are you seriously suggesting that making bento isn't a big deal? Did you forget that I work five times a week part-time? I said, you can just make an extra bento. Your part-time job doesn't start till 10, so you'll make it in time. You want me to make two people's worth of bento every day, drive over to their house every morning by 7.30 a.m., drive back, go to my part-time job, buy food for dinner, make dinner. You realize how much stress that adds to me? Come on, think a little bit. I have a little food left over from my bento. You just use a little bit left over from mine to make hers. Besides, you love to cook. You'll get used to it. Why doesn't she cook for her own child? It's literally her own daughter. She's tired from raising her child and household chores, you know? Just take it on. You'd be doing her a service. You're always saying, you always say helping out and caring, but you never help yourself. You always just push it on to me. How are you going to pretend you care? Your parents live by. Ask your mom. Mom isn't really good at cooking, so she didn't want to ask. Whatever. I'm not doing it. You need to tell her that she needs to take care of her own household. Besides, this whole thing is a bonding experience. She's really okay with me taking her important memories with her own child. You better watch your attitude! If you keep this up and reject her suggestions all the time, I have my own plans too! Okay, tell me what your little plans are. I don't need this cold and ruthless wife. I'm thinking of divorce. Uh-huh. You can't have me divorce you like that, right? So you have to obey me, your husband. Let me think about it. Yeah, you think about it. I expect an answer I'm going to be satisfied with. He seemed so proud of himself, feeling like he had just won. I went to the bedroom to remove myself from his presence. I'm sure he probably thought that I was scared of the words divorce. That couldn't be further from the truth. Okay, 
How am I gonna destroy that sister-loving moronic man? Divorce? Bring it on. My parents live super close, so I can just run to them if I can't stay here. It's no problem for me. But first, I need to make him understand how insane his suggestions are. I thought about everything I could say and do and came up with something. The next day. About what you said yesterday. I can take it on. Really? Then you could have just said that from the begin. But under certain conditions. If you accept, then I will listen. What are the conditions? I want you to go to my parents' house and clean their bath by 7.30 in the morning. What? Why do I- It's a trade-off. I've already spoken to my parents about this. I'm going to do that before I go to work? My parents' house is on the way to your work. Just swing by. Just swing by before work. But- If you want to turn this down, then I'm going to turn your offer down. If you want your lovely sister to get what she wants, you need to put yourself in the line of fire, too. Fine, I'll clean the bath, but you better do your part, too. You got it? He was complaining, but the second I brought his sister into it, he folded. The next day, I made the bento just like I promised, and he went by my parents' house to clean as he promised. I was ready to draw this out, but it really didn't take long before he gave up. That night, he came home and immediately apologized to me. I'm sorry, I was wrong. I'll tell my sister that you can't do this. What's going on? It's literally the first day. According to what he said, he didn't expect to actually have to clean, but my mom was no pushover. She forced him to clean the bath till you could eat off of it. He must have thought it was easy, but apparently it was harder than he thought. I mean, it makes sense. I've been delivering food every day that is easy to make. I totally get it. If you think it's just bento, then you should be able to handle your cleaning. She chewed me a new one. She just kept telling me about how terrible I was at cleaning. I see. Then you call rie right now about the bento. He called his sister immediately, and I could hear her voice from the speaker screaming at him. He turned her down, though. I'm sure my niece wants to eat her own mom's cooking, and I felt bad for her, so I'm glad that things ended quickly. Okay. Things are going to go back to normal. No way. You're going to go clean tomorrow, too. Why? I turned her down! What? Because I'm just a cold, ruthless wife. I'm useless and mean. I can't think about how much extra work it would be for you to go by my house before you go to work. You... You're still dragging that on? Yeah, of course. If you don't want to go, then you need to sign these papers. I had the divorce papers ready and he was in shock. What? Are you serious? Over this?! The fact that you think that this isn't a big deal means that you're going to do this again. I've been getting tired of this every time it gets brought up. I'm going to bust this out the second you make me try to do something for your sister again. Y you think that you can live off of your own earnings if we get a divorce? My parents' house is close and I can totally find a new job. I know that Reisan was the one that told you to use divorce as a tool for compliance. How are you going to let her manipulate you like that? What are you going to do? You either sign the papers and hand them over, or you keep cleaning every morning. You always like moving your body. You'll get used to it. I'll go clean tomorrow, too. He kept cleaning at my parents' house. Honestly, this was just revenge. If he had just apologized to me and come clean, I would have let it go. Two weeks later, he came home from work and begged for forgiveness. I'm so sorry for saying and doing things that made you feel bad. I'm sorry for using blackmail to try to make you listen. Please forgive me. I thought that I could just let you handle it. I was trying to push it all on you. I realize now how much I was wrong. I'm sorry. I don't want to divorce you. I want to keep working hard to be a worthy man for you. Fine. I forgive you. I understand that you feel bad. If you do it again, I won't bring up divorce. Thank you, Mina. If she asks you for a favor again, I'll just ask you for a different favor, too. What? Huh? My mom said she wanted to start her own home garden, and my dad was complaining that his car was dirty. The list goes on. If she asks something about it, I'm going to turn her down, so don't worry! Oh, how unfortunate. <laughs> That's how everything came to an end. I didn't have to deal with my sister-in-law anymore. A few weeks later, the doorbell rang. I was surprised by who was at my door. I'm so sorry for my wife's actions. Rie, apologize. I'm sorry. 
My sister-in-law's husband was apologizing while she sat there with a resting bitch face. I heard what happened from your husband. Apparently she had been pretty crazy while I was away on a business trip. Oh, it's okay. We really only... We really only accept once, so... Work has calmed down, so I'll make sure she doesn't do anything like this again. Also, hey, Yuka. You wanted to give her something, right? Auntie Mina, thank you for the bento. It was so cute and it tasted good, too. I made this at school. I want you to have it. Wow, it's so cute. What a kitty. You made it with origami? You're so good at that. My niece was so happy to give me her gift. I felt that making her bento, even just for a day, was worth it. I cannot believe that she was out fooling around while leaving Yuka at my parents' house. He left after dropping that bomb. After rethinking what was going on, I realized how insane her behavior was. I'm so sorry for him. He seemed to really understand what was going on finally, and I felt a little better about him. Yeah, it's their problem now. Hey Yuya, how about we start thinking about our own kids, huh? I was a little jealous after seeing Yuka. If he was kinder than before, then we would be able to have a wonderful family. My name is Sota Takeuchi. I'm a college student who's turning 19 this year. Phew! Finally finished off my essay. I came out in the middle of nowhere and finally started getting used to living in the city. I've actually been having way more fun than I thought in college, too. I enjoy all my studies and made new friends. I met my girlfriend Ayaka while going to club meets and parties. She also came from the middle of nowhere, and we really hit it off. At first it was plenty of fun. I had my girlfriend and friends around me, and I was just having the dream campus life. But there was one problem with Ayaka. Hey, do you want to go eat somewhere today? Sure! I want to eat soba, it's healthy! I know a good place. Let's go there. Because we were going to the same college, we ate together almost every day. We would often go out and eat, or eat at each other's houses and chill. That night, we went to a soba place to eat tempura, soba, and sushi as well. This looks great! Yeah, it does! I started slurping up my soba with my chopsticks, and then Ayaka pulled out her fork and spoon from her bag. She was eating the soba like she was eating pasta and eating the sushi with her spoon. You probably figured it out by now. She almost never used chopsticks and always ate with spoons and forks. She's gonna eat soba with a fork too? We often ate at places where a spoon and fork weren't strange. And we made dishes that didn't feel awkward using a spoon and fork at home either, but... Ayaka! <laughs> it's soba! So? Who cares? It's easier to use a spoon and fork anyway. Even if I subtly suggest she use chopsticks, she completely turns the suggestion down. I wouldn't mind if it was food that made sense to use a spoon and fork, but traditional Japanese dishes? I actually have only seen her eating rice balls when it comes to traditional Japanese food. I wonder what the employees and other patrons think about her. I was so nervous that I couldn't focus on the meal. Ayaka, we're eating in public. Can you use chopsticks? I know you don't mind, but I don't like it. Let me eat how I want to eat. It's not like I'm bothering anyone. I mean, yeah, but it's manners, you know? I could ignore it at home, but... Ugh, stop nagging! She was immediately upset. Apparently, her parents didn't really scold her for using a spoon and fork. My parents don't care as long as I can eat it. We're in a multi We're in a multicultural society now, so it's okay for people not to be able to use chopsticks. Yeah, that's probably what people say when they can't eat using chopsticks <laughs> because they're physically unable to or maybe I'm just being insane. Maybe she'll change after she finds a job. I didn't bother pushing the matter. Afterwards, I ended up breaking up with her about two months later. It had nothing to do with a spoon, but rather, she found someone else she liked more. She dumped me, saying that she was just excited about being in college when she started dating me. 
Afterwards, we graduated college in the blink of an eye, and I found a nice job at a decent company. The pay was good, but I worked late often. I was dating a girl called Sumire, who's a year younger than me. She works a really hard job, and I can't see her every day. Going out to eat on the weekends is one of the most fun things we do together. Then one day, I got a call from Ayaka. Hey, uh, been a minute. How you doing? I hadn't spoken to her since we'd broken up. I was honestly hit with a wave of nostalgia more than anything. Hey, Ayaka. Long time. I'm alright. What's up? I thought maybe it was something to do with a class reunion or something. We'd only dated for two months or so, so it wasn't like I had overwhelming resentment towards her. The negative feelings I had toward her had already vanished. I heard you found a nice job, huh? It's not that big of a deal. I'm super busy. I see. I'll tell you what. I'll forgive you for that time we can just go out again. That time? You kept complaining about me eating. I remembered the spoon and fork. Even thinking back now, it's a little weird. I know I'm pretty cute. Just forgive me and we can go hang out again. No, I'm good. I think we won't have fun even when we spend time together anyway. What? You're going to reject my invitation? I'm saying I'll date you! Yeah, no. Bye. Hey! I was such an idiot for being nostalgic. From the sound of it, she hadn't changed at all from college. The best thing I could do was not get involved. That Friday, I had reservations with Sumire at a nice Japanese cuisine restaurant, and we were going to relax and unwind together. Ah, here it is. Let's go. I'm so excited. Just as we were about to go inside. What a coincidence. Ayaka? Ayaka had appeared behind us. There was no way that this was pure coincidence. I'm sure she followed me from my office or something. I'm about to go eat. Let's go together. You know her? I'm his ex. Come on, say it's fine. No, it's not fine. You can go eat as much as you'd like, but don't eat near us. Sumire also looked a little confused. We ignored Ayaka and walked inside. Of course, Ayaka came in with us. Hey! Oh, it's fine. Want to eat with us? Sumire? Sumire was pretty calm and quiet. She didn't seem to mind Ayaka. See? She says it's fine. Come on. We were able to add an extra serving for our course. The whole room was weird, but we started talking. What? You're his girlfriend? Oh my gosh, you look so unimpressionable. <laughs> I get that a lot. Sumire was just sitting there, grinning. I kept trying to stop Ayaka, but she would just give me a shit-eating grin. Can she please just leave? What did she come here for? And before I knew it, our food was here. Sashimi with some stew and soup. There were all kinds of fancy foods being served up, and right as Sumire and I grabbed our chopsticks... Woo! This looks amazing! No surprise here. She grabbed her spoon and fork. She had no hesitation using them either. Sashimi, rice, miso soup... It didn't matter. That's actually kind of impressive. Sumire was a little aghast. But she didn't say anything. She just started eating her own food. That's how you're supposed to follow manners. It was clear which one looked better eating their food. This is so good. I love it. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I, uh... Ayaka... Ayaka-san, um... Sumire asked with no malice at all. You don't know how to use chopsticks? If you want, I can teach you. What? what Of course I know how to use chopsticks! How dare you! Oh, I see. You were using a spoon and fork, so why don't you use chopsticks? Because I don't spill this way. It's easier, too. I see. But you should use chopsticks. People are gonna assume you can't use it and you're like a kindergarten student or something. <laughs> uh. 
I was honestly about to burst out laughing. She was trembling. Her face was bright red. It was also funny because Sumire, like I mentioned earlier, really meant no offense. She really did want to help her out if she didn't know how to use chopsticks. You should have her teach you. You're the same as when you were in college. This is perfect timing for you. Enough! What the hell? Stop talking like it's just a given to be using chopsticks if you're an adult. I'm not bothering anyone! She said the same thing that she did years ago in college. It's not anything... It's not anything to do with bothering others. It's manners that you learn to follow as a child. My eight-year-old nephew can use chopsticks too. Sh shut up, shut up! I'm gonna leave because this place sucks. Bye! She was trying to put away her spoon and fork. Ayaka had noticed all of the eyes looking at her. The employees were looking at Ayaka and the spoon and fork in her hands. Ayaka finally realized what people thought looking at her eat like that. She was trying to leave. You can't leave without paying. Of course I'm going to pay. I'm sure she wanted to run out of the store right now. Ayaka pulled out three wrinkled $10 bills and threw them on the table. I don't think that's enough. But Ayaka was already long gone. We apologized to the employees who looked concerned, and we started enjoying the great meal in front of us. Ayaka immediately sent me a text full of hate and anger. You embarrassed me! That was the worst experience of my life! I'm going to sue you! Etc, etc. Apparently, Ayaka was warned time and time again, but never bothered heeding the warnings. She went out to work, and all of her friends were immediately taken aback by her mysterious little habit. She would often break up with her boyfriends because they would have utensil squabbles. That's why she reached out to me. One of my friends from college let me know, and I almost pitied her. She was warned by everyone else too, but she still wouldn't budge. That's actually impressive in some ways. I remember her finding a decent job, but apparently now she works at a temp agency, bouncing from workplace to workplace. I'm not sure if it had to do with her food manners or just her personality, but I do feel bad for her not being able to just fit in. She was apparently running around telling people that my girlfriend and I embarrassed her in public, but of course, her reputation preceded her. No one would believe a thing she said. If anything, they were all starting to avoid her, and she was becoming isolated. I still date Sumire, and we're actually engaged now. But sometimes we talk about Ayaka, and remember how cringy she was. If she just said yes, I'd gladly teach her. Sumire was honest to God worried for Ayaka. Because she was being so honest and innocent, it was probably even more insulting to Ayaka. Even if it's easier, you need to learn manners fitting for your age and time. If everyone was on the same page as you, it wouldn't matter. But that's not always the case. Manners are around to make sure those around you don't feel uncomfortable. I think I kind of get it now. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button!